With the fairly recent addition of hardware transcoding in Plex, you might think a 1080 Ti, a Titan XP, a Radeon Pro Vega 64, or maybe the next generation RTX 2080 Amp Ti GTXP Pro 64 graphics card would obviously be the best solution for fast and plentiful transcodes on a Plex server. Well, you'd be wrong. Can a $400 GPU in your Plex server be a better solution than these performance gaming GPUs? Is the transcoding performance you get actually worth spending money on a Quattro, or is it better to invest that money in a less expensive consumer-grade GPU? I'm going to fully test the NVIDIA Quattro P2000 graphics card with Plex and show you why a GPU can outperform dual Xeon CPUs to provide an equal or better experience for your Plex viewers. Measuring performance, responsiveness, power consumption, and ultimately comparing cost. I'll go over what limitations or gotchas there are with hardware transcoding and Plex that you might run into on this journey, using practical tests to get the results that matter to you. I'll be using the NVIDIA Quattro P2000 GPU in a 2U Supermicro server. This server has two X5670 CPUs running at about 3.33 gigahertz. It has 72 gigabytes of DDR3 memory and a 256 gigabyte 850 Pro Samsung SSD for the operating system as well as the media. With the onset of H.265, we've seen smaller file sizes for media, sometimes as much as half the file size or even better. The biggest problem with H.265 is the compatibility with players. When Plex has to transcode H.265 to H.264 or something equivalent, it's historically been a pretty tough job at least without something capable of doing hardware transcoding, like a P2000. And when most of your standard gaming GPUs, like this 980 here, will only allow for two extra simultaneous transcode sessions in Plex, turning on hardware transcoding and wasting a perfectly good and powerful gaming GPU like this one really doesn't make a lot of sense. But why would NVIDIA enforce a maximum of two transcode sessions? They lock this down because these are consumer-grade products, the Quattro P2000, on the other hand, is built for enterprise-level needs and is designed to be able to run 24-7, unlike its consumer-grade counterpart. This is a complicated topic in and of itself, but you can do research on comparisons between the Quattro line and the gaming line, formerly known as GTX, now called RTX. A link to the full list of encode and decode support from NVIDIA is in the video description below. If you click the link, you'll see the P2000 allows for an unrestricted number of concurrent sessions. So with that, let's dive right in. The first test was with H.265 1080p to H.264 1080p. Plex playback quality was set on maximum. I compared the results of the dual X5670 CPUs with the P2000, and just for fun, I threw in some tests with a 6700K with QuickSync enabled and a 980 Ti. So I could compare the performance of a more powerful gaming GPU to the Quattro. The dual X5670 with hardware transcoding off played a total of five transcodes. Depending on the media used, whether I needed to transcode AC3 to AAC audio, I might be able to leave a sixth transcode running. Here on this channel, we like to focus on practical tests that yield meaningful results. I wanted to not just cover the performance, but to also include answers to important questions around cost. So we'll cover initial cost, running cost, and expected lifespan of the parts in our comparison later. But for reference, six transcodes had a continuous power draw of roughly 463 watts of power. If your utility company charges 12 cents per kilowatt hour running continuously, that's almost $500 a year for power costs alone. The 6700K with QuickSync and a 980 Ti only achieved seven transcodes at 200 watts continuous power draw. This with 100% CPU utilization, but only 11 to 13% GPU utilization, as the 980 Ti again only supports two streams because it's locked from Nvidia. I'm guessing QuickSync support on the 6700K, as well as the healthy 4.6 GHz overclock and the two extra streams from the 980 Ti is what actually made up the difference from running dual X5670 CPUs. Their Passmark scores are relatively close to each other. The 6700K at 11.1K, and with its overclock, it's probably closer to 12 to 13K. The dual X5670s come in at 12.35K. This seems to confirm the statements from Plex that you can achieve one 1080p H.264 transcode per 2K Passmark CPU score. It seems H.265 requires around 2400 to 3000 for transcode to H.264. 
I know what you're thinking. These are old, slow, and low core count CPUs. Show us something more powerful. Well, here is a server running dual E5 2680 V2 CPUs with 40 cores total. It's capable of about 14 transcodes at 100% CPU utilization. The P2000 with dual X5670 CPUs was able to get a total of 18 streams loaded before the GPU reached 97% utilization. At 18 streams, my power consumption was roughly 320 watts. We could only get six streams at maximum from the X5670, and we were pulling 463 watts when we did. But at the same number of streams, six, the P2000 was only pulling 265 watts. If your utility company charges 12 cents per kilowatt hour running continuously, that's almost $280 a year, compared to the $500 the X5670 is running continuously would cost. That's a savings of about $220 a year. So even if you were to somehow combine enough X5670s to get the 18 streams you can get from a P2000, the cost savings alone would be worth it in power consumption. Now, at 18 streams, the GPU utilization was around 95%, but I was able to load another five streams after that for a total of 23 streams without any buffering. The CPU utilization would spike up to 70 to 85 percent and the GPU pretty much was pegged out at 100 percent. The power consumption with 23 streams loaded was around 440 watts, still a tiny bit less than running with hardware transcoding off and you're able to get an additional 18 streams out of it. On to the next test. The next test was 4K H.264 transcoded down to 1080p. Hardware transcoding 4K H.264 to 1080p netted me 13 streams with hardware transcoding on and only three streams with hardware transcoding off. With hardware transcoding on, I got 66% GPU utilization and about 25% CPU utilization. I was able to add an additional 10 4K direct plays. There was probably more room to grow here, but each client could only load two of these at a time, and I ran out of clients. With hardware transcoding off, I got a total of three 4K H.264 to 1080p streams. The CPU utilization was pretty much pegged at 100%. Again, I was able to add an additional 10 direct plays without seeing any buffering. Hardware transcoding 4K H.265 to 1080p H.264 netted me around 13 transcodes. I ended up running out of clients to test with again as I experienced the same limitation of running these transcodes in browsers. At 13 transcodes, the GPU only hit 50% utilization and the CPU was hovering around 18 to 30%. I think it had more room to go here as well, but I simply ran out of clients and didn't have enough to continue. With hardware transcoding off, I was only able to get a single 4K H.265 to 264 1080p transcode to load. This next test was transcoding H.264 1080p down to H.264 720p at 4 megabits per second. I actually got 20 plus transcodes before I just gave up. I'm sorry, but I think it would take more computers than I have available to me to actually push this GPU and CPU combo to its limits, at least in this way. For argument's sake, the CPU with 20 transcodes was hovering around 38 to 40 percent and the GPU was somewhere around 75 percent. From my experience with other transcoding, I think it had at least 10 to 20 transcodes in it, possibly more. I might revisit this in a later video, but for comparison's sake, when I turned hardware transcoding off, I only achieved a total of 10 playable streams. Now this brings up an interesting question. How does a Plex score for a GPU translate when hardware transcoding in Plex? The pass mark score for the P2000 is 7,838. This would suggest that with it supporting around 18 265 to 264 1080p streams, you might need around 440 to 450 points per stream. However, tests with a few more Quattro cards would be required to form any real conclusions. The next test I was curious about was what the load times might look like between having hardware transcoding on versus leaving it off. The results were somewhat surprising. With hardware transcoding off, the X5670s hold their own and load times are quite respectable, especially when compared to having hardware transcoding on. With hardware transcoding on, clicking through 4K to 720p was quite slow. However, I can't imagine many people will be loading 4K files on a 720p display. This was mostly done for comparison's sake. The quick times on the 6700K are likely due to its 4.6 GHz overclock and the 980 Ti being that much more powerful of a GPU. The 980 Ti has 2.75 times the total amount of CUDA cores compared to the P2000. Its FP32 performance is around 6 gigaflops compared to the P2000's 3 gigaflops. 
it's really too bad you can only run two transcodes on the 980 Ti. Otherwise, I think it would do really well in Plex. The next thing I wanted to test was quality. For all the talk I read online about quality issues with hardware transcoding, I did not see what all the fuss was really about. When transcoding X265 to X264 native resolution, the quality comparison was something I did not notice as shown in the pictures. I decided then to transcode down to lower resolutions, and I still did not see any quality loss with hardware transcoding on. If anything, the quality seemed to get better with hardware transcoding on. I then tested 4K 264, transcoded that down to 1080p at 10 megabits per second to compare. For all the complaining I've read online about hardware transcoding ruining quality, it just doesn't seem very noticeable, at least not in Plex. Maybe converting media is a different story. All the sample pictures were blown up to zooms that would be the equivalent of you sitting directly in front of your TV or projector screen, and in all cases, the quality seemed unaffected. So in conclusion, we talked about the P2000's superior performance with multiple sessions, load times, and video quality. Let's finish up by talking about some of the limitations and problems I encountered during these tests. For starters, there was a problem trying to transcode high-resolution X265 files with AC3 audio down to X264 files with AAC audio at lower resolutions than the original source. This was only present in browsers. Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, these are the ones I tested with and they all exhibited the same problem. That may be a showstopper for some of you with a lot of viewers who prefer streaming on those platforms. However, it's worth noting this problem did not exist with native X265 AAC files, nor did it seem to exist in Plex players. Hardware transcoding also doesn't seem to be quite as snappy as running with hardware transcoding off for 4K transcoding down to lower resolutions, but maybe that's okay with you because who on earth transcodes 4K down to 720p? There's also the issue of form factor. The P2000 does not come in a half-height configuration, so you'll need to invest in PCIe ribbon cables and right-angle adapters or some type of MacGyver solution to account for that if you didn't already have the appropriate space for the card. There might be other reasons that may preclude you from using this card, but those are some of the limitations that first stuck out to me. If you think of more, or if you have questions, please share them in the comments below. For my Plex server, the additional concurrent sessions, the decreased cost in power, and the equal video quality that I found in my testing, it made sense to spend $350 to $400 for this card. This card costs about $400, but you get tons more sessions around the same or better load times in most cases, and equal or the same quality video from doing transcoding with software on your CPUs. If that doesn't convince you alone, consider the power consumption. If your utility company charges you $0.12 cents per kilowatt hour running continuously, the P2000 will cost you almost $280 a year to run. Compared to almost the $500 the X5670s would cost you running the same number of transcodes, that's a savings of about $220 a year. So even if you were able to somehow combine enough X5670s to get the 18 streams you can get from a single P2000, the cost savings and power consumption alone would be worth using this card. Speaking of power consumption, in our next video, I'm going to answer the questions that I had after I made this video. Can the Quattro P2000 alone turn that old dusty computer you have sitting in your closet into a powerful Plex server? And how many streams can you actually get using the P2000 in a slow, antiquated computer like that? Please find the links below for ways to connect with us. Comment if you have questions, and like and share if you think this video was helpful.